really thick black smoke. From his front lawn, Craig Moffat watched fires spill over the hill. You could see the flames when we were driving down the road and they came over the crest of the hill. So uh, it was kind of scary, you know, first time seeing a fire that close to your house. Moffat and his family among the hundreds who fled Sunday night as a new fire sparked up in West Kelowna. This morning, he's home again, watching a full-on aerial assault on a fire the chief says moved like a snake. It was at times explosive. Uh, the wind drove it quickly in many directions. And hardly the only fire on a night best described as apocalyptic. Dense smoke choked out the light, creating blood-red skies in Armstrong. Darkness fell at 4 p.m. A slew of evacuation alerts and orders from Kamloops to the Okanagan Indian Band territory not long after. Get, 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 get. Jeff Freed had to round up his cattle to get them to safety in the pitch black. Oh, usually we're not trying to load them in the dark, so they don't really, they're a little freaked out about that. And... While between Merritt and Hope, B.C., two fires merged. Holy shit! shutting down a major highway and escape route for evacuees. Strong gusting winds and unrelenting smoke kept aerial crews away from the northeast of the White Rock Lake fire for days. Today, news some 60 structures on this side of the Okanagan Lake destroyed, hitting evacuees hard. Just too much for us to lose. And uh, that's the position we're in right now. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that we'll be all right, but uh, I, I think we'll be safe. Katie, it's so striking to see those pictures, and we have seen worsening conditions for fire crews for days now. What's your sense of what's ahead for them? Well, there is a little relief. In fact, it's been raining this afternoon in Vernon, sort of at that northeast edge of the White Rock Lake fire. And there is rain in the forecast here in Kelowna. Uh, however, there's also a little bit of lightning in that forecast, which can, you know, also spark up other fires. What is really needed here, what people are really hoping for, is sustained heavy rainfall. That's really what's going to be a game changer for all the fires throughout this region. All right, let's hope they get it. Katie, thank you. You're welcome. 那么最明显也最直接的变化就是气温的上升今年这个夏天除了美国之外包括希腊土耳其西班牙等几个欧洲东南部国家都因为过于干燥炎热爆发大规模的森林野火那么已经连烧六天的希腊埃维尔亚
，让已经在疫情中受创的旅游业再度受挫。大火同样延烧多日的西班牙瓦伦西亚，有将近两百人被迫逃离，目前消防人员仍在跟恶火奋战中。华视新闻综合报道。The smoke we are breathing here in Utah is from wildfires burning in the Pacific states. That airborne river of toxic particulates sent air quality readings spiking again this weekend. Going in depth this afternoon, Fox 13's Max Roth joins us with a look at what the smoke is doing to our health. Max. Yeah, Bob, thank you. You know, there's no question it is having an impact. I'm sure a lot of our viewers are feeling it right now. That's why we talked to Dr. Robert Simmons this afternoon. He worked the ER at Ogden Regional Medical Center through the weekend and today. I've seen multiple patients come in, asthmatics, patients who have COPD, patients who have underlying lung disease, heart disease, feeling like the air has definitely affected how they're breathing and how they're feeling. National weather satellites show the source, monster fires in California and Oregon, sending toxic particulate clouds east. The U.S. government's wildland fire site, Air Now, shows layers of data. You can see where the fires are, and then see where the smoke is going, and then see what that means for what we're breathing in Utah. For now, the Wasatch Front has the biggest population that's getting hit so directly. Dr. Simmons says watch for symptoms. Asthmatics who experience symptoms but have medication that allows them to be comfortable? They can probably see how well they will do at home. But don't take chances if it's worse. Anyone who is developing chest pain or if they feel like they just cannot catch their breath no matter what they're trying, they need to get right to the hospital to get looked at. And remember, it's not just about the lungs. Studies have definitely shown that when bad air increases, the incidence of heart attacks goes up. Adding to the problem, COVID-19. We are seeing patients come in who have previously had COVID, who feel like with this air quality, their work of breathing and their difficulty breathing has returned somewhat. It's not that COVID has been reactivated in them, but they're still suffering from some of the longer term effects on the lungs when the air gets back. 土耳其的爱琴海和地中海沿岸地区近来发生超过一百八十起野火。在高温和干燥强风助长下，烧掉一大片森林，数以千计的土耳其人被迫逃离家园。火势还延烧到西南部一座燃煤发电厂，沿海村民也被疏散。We didn't sleep. We waited until this morning. The little sleep we got, we took turns keeping watch. We filled up our buckets with water and brought them to the streets. There's nothing else we can do. I have no hope because I won't be able to see the forests, which may well be replanted one day. Perhaps even my children won't see them. 根据外媒报道，土耳其已经出动飞机和数十架直升机协助灭火，但埃尔段政府还是被批评反应不够快。土耳其的邻国也正在对抗热浪和强风引发的火势。希腊正遭遇三十多年来最严重的热浪，连日摄氏四十度以上的高温外加强风，在各地引发森林野火，影响交通和电力供应。I want to stress once more: it is absolutely necessary to take care. The weather conditions are extreme. There are massive threats of wildfires, and so we should remain on high alert. 欧盟哥白尼大气监控机构表示，地中海地区已经成为野火热区，包括克罗埃西亚和塞浦路斯也都发生野火。相关问题值得重视。庄舍综合报道。Want to get to that breaking news for you this morning? This is between Sacramento and Tahoe. A wildfire exploding overnight. Now the evacuation and rescue efforts—they are underway, adding to a recipe for disaster. Those incoming gusty winds. That's always such a big concern. Today in the base, Chris Sanchez has been pouring through some of the new video that's just coming into our newsroom, and the extent of the damage of this fire so far, Chris. Yeah, we just got a frightening dispatch from those front lines. Firefighters say they are having trouble accessing. Water, as they are defending a community where we know at least 50 homes 
are already wiped out. Those homes are in the Grizzly Flats neighborhood, which looked like this this morning. U.S. Forest Service firefighters are still trying to defend what structures are left against the Caldor fire. They are working alongside Cal Fire, which said it was already out of control when the fires kicked in last night. Now, our crew spotted an ambulance headed into that danger zone to reach at least one person who was reportedly burned. At least 50 homes are destroyed. We also know several other structures are also under threat. Cal Fire is still fighting that fire, which is now at least 2,200 acres. There are mandatory evacuation orders in effect. Now, here's where the Caldor Fire is burning. It is in El Dorado County. If you are familiar, Grizzly Flats and Happy Valley are the places that are under evacuation order. It is a tough firefight because of that rugged terrain there. Here's what an NBC Sacramento reporter saw this morning. Right here, this is the perimeter of the fire where it's just slowly advancing. It's burning its way through the forest, where in other areas it's burning upslope and fueled by the wind. And that's where there's a much greater, uh, it's burning at a much greater rate, much faster. Now, in the incident report for this Caldor fire, which started on Saturday, the U.S. Uh, Forest Service and Cal Fire said that they were already stretched thin because of other fires. And these are the fires that are burning right now in our state. So it is no wonder that they are taxed. So far this year, more than a million acres have either burned or are burning in more than 6,500 incidents. That includes the Dixie wildfire, which we have been reporting on extensively. That also was fed by wind gusts overnight. There are new evacuation orders for the Dixie fire in the area of Susanville, where thousands of homes are now under threat. That fire is only 31% contained. Now, the fire is a factor not just for the Dixie fire, but also the Caldor fire, which really did take off overnight, though it's been burning since Saturday. Cal Fire says that there, the wind Wind's forecast for the next three days could allow aggressive fire runs of three miles or more. 除了希腊在酷暑下狂烧，向来以刺骨寒冬闻名于世的西伯利亚北部也频频传出森林大火。单单在星期天就发生了一百五十五场火灾。俄罗斯官方紧急疏散的两个村庄的居民，东北部的自治共和国萨哈有十几个村庄遭遇大火威胁，大约三千六百人投入救灾，努力的控制大火。灾情之下，资讯混乱。先是传出萨哈领袖下令砍伐受灾村庄周边的林木，开辟防火带的消息，不过后来他的发言人又改口说没有这回事。科学家认为。气候变迁导致俄罗斯近来屡屡创下高温，加上安全疏忽，造成火灾频传。